All right, guys, so we have to do another follow-up video on the Alabama Montgomery Riverfront brawl that is going viral because of the racial dynamic of having a bunch of black people beat up uh, some white men who decided to jump a black dock worker, okay? You got a lot of people out here, specifically black people, celebrating this like it's Christmas, right? Like it's Kwanzaa, it's Juneteenth, right? Again, it's amazing stuff. Now, my initial take on this situation was very nuanced. I felt I was very fair. I called a white man the same thing that I would call anybody of any race uh, who participated in the actions that they participated in, which is, you know, leaving their boat docked in a place in which it wasn't supposed to be docked. I said that they were uh, entitled, that they were engaged in thug and criminal behavior, and that they should be punished to the fullest extent of the law however there are some black people who had a problem with my take and i'm going to show you guys at least one video of a, a black person that has a problem with my take because i actually use nuance which is something that a lot of people don't seem to really understand when it comes to analyzing politics and news that the world is not black and white um which is that hey uh some of the black people that decided to jump the white men okay after the fight was initially over they're in the wrong as well too okay and the reason why is because their actions were unnecessary and like i said in my initial reaction to this conflict i actually don't want to see those black people go to jail i don't want to see them get in trouble unnecessarily and that's why i think that it's important to call out that type of bad behavior especially considering how in that situation it was entirely unnecessary and now lo and behold you have black people getting arrested for, again, engaging in behavior that was entirely unnecessary and honestly, behavior that should be condemned. Like, for example, beating women and hitting people with chairs, right? Like this guy right here, right, who was arrested, okay? The infamous viral chair wielding guy. A whole lot of memes have been made about this guy. This guy's been celebrated on the internet, okay, for picking up a chair and smashing people in the head, okay, including women, right for assaulting people with a chair and lo and behold he has been rightfully arrested because his actions were entirely unnecessary and he should not have done that and it's something that again a lot of these black people weren't so damn emotional and so caught up in the fake race war that has brainwashed black people from the media uh again should have condemned these actions and it should have never happened in the first place and i think that the outcome of what happened down there in Alabama actually would have been a lot better off for black folks uh, if if these unnecessary actions weren't taken. I'm going to prove my point here, right? Uh, but first, I want to read about uh, the charges that have been levied against this guy, right? Fully deserved. Uh, because again, he was out here, you know, <laughs> hitting people in the head with a chair unnecessarily. The guy caught on video smashing people over the head with a folding chair in that riverfront brawl in Montgomery, Alabama, has just been arrested. The Montgomery Police Department announced Friday that Reggie Ray turned himself in and he's been charged with disorderly conduct and is being held in the municipal jail. Now, it ain't just the black dude with the chair, right? They got charged, okay? You got four other people who were arrested in charge, uh, Zachary Shipman. Alan Todd, uh, they turned themselves in on Wednesday and are charged with one count of third degree assault. Uh, Richard Roberts, 48, uh, was the first arrested. He's accused of punching a 16 year old uh, dock hand. Uh, then there's Mary Todd, 21, who turned herself in Thursday. She's charged with assault third degree, which uh, we're told stems from attacking the ferry co captain. Okay, so here's the thing. Right, you got women arrested, you got these guys arrested, all of them, again, should be punished to the full extent of the law. I will say that again for the haters that will probably react to this video because they're mad <laughs> that I'm basically holding everybody accountable. These people should be charged to the fullest extent of the law for engaging in thug-like behavior, right? But it won't matter <laughs> that I said this because the work revolutionary is going to be mad anyways because, again, they don't understand nuance, they don't understand balance, right? And here's my proof, okay, because... There have been people that have made reactions to that video and my take. They don't like my take. Uh, none of the responses actually engaged in any real arguments, right? They were just ad hominem attacks against me being a sellout and a, you know, Tom or whatever, right? Like, for example, this response right here from Miss Courtney Michelle. Have you noticed that the conservative side of the people that's on YouTube are very, very quiet about what happened in Alabama, in Montgomery? Have you noticed that? 
Candace Owens ain't said a word. Matt Walsh ain't said a word. The people at PragerU and uh, Daily Wire are super duper quiet. Hmm. You know, there was a black conservative guy. I think that's what he goes by on YouTube. Said something, but he's a dingbat. This man had a show talking about this had nothing to do with race. Those people was just drunk. They was just drunk. But then the title of the show was The Race War Has Begun. Thought it had nothing to do about race. See, he's an idiot. And you have to dummy down when you can't be honest and truthful. And when you can't be balanced. Those people, those white men and women in Alabama that was getting hit with that folding chair. You better believe they were some good white uh, conservative MAGA wearing folks. Of course they were. It's Alabama. But see, they was in the wrong. And of course, these people, especially these black conservatives, are not going to say anything to disrupt or mess up their audience. So they either have to be quiet or turn a narrative into something that it clearly is. Where you at, candy girl? Candy girl, you don't want to say nothing. Nothing at all? Oh, oh I can't stand people that will say every story about black people that make us look so ridiculous so ghetto and uneducated and everything sluts and thugs under the book but then when you have black people that stand together and in defense of another black man being attacked you can't even give your people your culture a show to say yeah they was right don't start none won't be none couldn't even do that oh man let me tell you this train keep on trucking along doesn't it so yeah you ain't gonna they ain't gonna say nothing you ain't gonna hear nothing but best believe if it's another bra against black folks and black folks you already know every single one of them is gonna say something Oh, especially the, the black conservatives, the old black. Oh, they, oh, they're going to they love it to talk ill will about black folks. <sighs> Anyways, shout out to Montgomery, Alabama. I'm still proud of y'all. Now, I want you guys to understand, right? Miss Courtney Michelle is entitled to her opinion, just like all the other people or the few people that I've seen that made reactions and don't uh, like my opinion. Okay, on this situation, I'm not going to engage in any ad hominem attacks because I have no reason to attack them. I can actually make an argument, right? I don't need to attack people personally, right? I don't need to call people idiots. I don't need to call people uh, racial slurs or question their blackness because they have a different opinion than me. I don't have to do that, right? I can actually engage with the argument. Now, let me make my argument here, right? Because, again, I want you guys to understand, as a black person, you're supposed to to 100% agree with all of the rest of black folks, never hold black people accountable or else, you know, you're shucking and jiving for the white man and you never say anything to piss off your quote unquote white audience. Again, I love when people who clearly don't watch my videos try to tell me what I think and what I do when, again, if you watch my videos, specifically my videos on January 6th, there's been multiple times where I've stated unequivocally on my channel, even though I know that there are a lot of people in the audience that won't like it, yeah, the violence on that day was unacceptable, right? I don't uh, condone that and I condemn that violence. Come to find out, a lot of it was actually done by the feds, right? Uh, who were trying to push people to commit violent acts. But if you weren't a fed and you were there and you committed violent acts, then clearly that is wrong and it should be condemned, right? Again, not a popular take, but I've said this multiple times on my channel. Now, again, let me get to my argument here, right? My argument... Uh, which, again, revolves around the fact that I don't want to see black people get unnecessarily arrested. And I'm going to tell you guys why it was unnecessary. is because what a lot of people are forgetting when it comes to analyzing this brawl out in Alabama is the fact that the initial confrontation that everybody remembers, everybody saw, where uh, the white guys jumped the black dock worker, okay? When that first happened, you already had black people there to defend the black dock worker. There was an initial fight, okay? It was over and it was done with now i'm going to show you guys a video okay after everything is basically done and over with where when the 
ferry pulls up to the dock. You remember all the people on the ferry in the video as well, too, that was egging it on? Okay. These people decide to get off the boat after the initial fight was over to then confront the white men who are sitting in their boat. Again, after everything was over, or so it seemed. That's what it looked like. But again, clearly this is unnecessary. Watch this. Hey, y'all been going to jail, bro. Excuse me. Oh, you're doing the jail. Cause these motherfuckers thought they thought shit was sweet. They're going to jail. They had no business jumping on no boat. Look at the crew member. Look at the crew member. They ready, y'all. All y'all ass need to load up. Oh, look at the crew. All of them. Jumped on that man. They ready. Oh, they ready. Big boy bumping like good game. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Red back ass. Hey, they couldn't do nothing with that man. They jumped off. You had to sit on him. Hey, I'm probably real. Hey, I'm going to mess with him. Hey, I'm going to mess with man. You scared, man? I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to get out of the way. I'll sleep down there. Everybody oh, can sit down. Bill, that's my boat right there. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Don't get through here. Hey, baby. What the hell? Y'all, these white folks jumped on these black men that work security. We trying to get on the sipper cycle, the Marriott, trying to come through. And the man was telling them to move their boat because the Marriott couldn't dock so the folks could get off. And everybody on the sipper cycle, we just wait. Why these folks just the swung on and the jumped on that black man? Baby, these, the crew member that jumped off the Marriott, baby. They whooping ass, baby. Now come up out that boat, baby. They ready to move south. They ready to move south. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Y'all were talking a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah, so you seen that, you heard that. Now you guys saw it. There was peace and there was calm. The initial confrontation, the initial fight was over. The police are on the way, and you know the police are on the way, to arrest the white guys because the police show up shortly after the next confrontation starts where, again, all these black people get off the boat like a wild mob and they go confront these white guys unnecessarily. The police are already on the way. You have hundreds of eyewitnesses. You have video these guys are going to jail and they're getting charged without a doubt. But no, 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 no. Because you got to stay on code, right? As a black person, these people got off the boat unnecessarily and started another riot, right? When it was entirely unnecessary. Why am I saying this? It's quite simple. The reason why I'm saying this is because this situation would have been way better off for black people if they would not have done that. Let me tell you why. First and foremost, they would have unequivocally had the high ground. People like me, right, the so-called sellout, I could not have come out here and said anything negative about black people. In fact, I would have been praising all these black people and saying, hey, yeah, you were, you were right to defend that black dock worker and to give those white men what they were asking for. 100% you were right, okay? And after that initial fight was over, yeah, they should be arrested and charged to the full extent of the law. Congratulations for using restraint and thinking with your head in that situation, right? But where you lost the high ground, when everything is over, the police are coming to arrest the guys, these people getting off the boat and getting into a conflict that had nothing to do with them. Now, you got black people out there beating women, okay? You got, again, the chair guy out there beating people in the head with a chair. So now, guess what? You've lost the high ground. Now, you've become the aggressor, right? You become the aggressor. You're out there assaulting people. Now, you have black people getting arrested. Now, again, why did I say that? Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I don't want black people to get arrested. Unnecessarily. It was not necessary. I don't want to see black people get arrested unnecessarily. But again, you got a lot of people out here who, again, they're so caught up in this, this pro-black nonsense that they, they can't see the forest through the trees. They can't. They can't. 
all they can think about is, oh, well, them white guys jumped that black guy. We got to go out here and we got to keep fighting. When the fight is over, that is not necessary. Those guys are going to jail. It's over. See, but again, I'm called a sellout. I'm called this. I'm called that because I'm trying to help black people think smarter about situations like this. I'm trying to advise black people to stop thinking with our emotions and to be smart and to use our heads and to handle situations the way they should be handled. Right? Because guess what? If police don't arrest the white guys, if they don't charge the white guys, now black people actually have a ground to stand on and say, well, we have this on video. We have eyewitness testimony. They're not arresting the white guys. There must be racism going on here. Right? They, they literally can say, hey, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about in regards to so-called systemic racism and all that. They could have pulled that that card. They could have pulled all that stuff, right? Again, it's a win-win. If you don't start the second confrontation, you win, right? There's nothing negative that can be said. Black people clearly in this situation are the victim. The evil white man jumped the black guy. Black people defending themselves. If the police arrest the white guys, great. They get arrested, they get charged, they get punished, great. But if they don't arrest the white guys, then you can, you know, hey, why are they not arresting the white guys? We got it on video. Eyewitness testimony. Must be racism. Could I come out here and say it's not? Hey, I can say, well, hey, might be. Right? I mean, hey, this is this is kind of crazy. I mean, those guys should have been arrested for that. Right? There's nothing I can say. Right? I couldn't say anything. But see... Because these people made that decision to continue a fight that was done to unnecessarily go out here and assault people, including women. Now you have a situation where you've lost the high ground to a certain extent. Now you have a situation where you're probably going to have more black people get arrested and unnecessarily face charges. They're going to unnecessarily face court costs. They're going to have to unnecessarily fight this type of stuff when, not, when it wasn't necessary wasn't necessary and, and this is the difficulty of being a so-called black conservative if i don't talk about it oh i'm not talking about it because it doesn't fit the narrative oh you quiet on this because you see these white people in the wrong and you don't want to piss off your white audience right this is what they say if i don't talk about it i'm wrong okay if i do talk about it i'm still wrong for not having the right opinion aka <laughs> Speaking truth, being objective about the situation and saying, yeah, those white people got what was coming to them, right, in regards to the initial confrontation, but I, I, I don't think it was right to be out there beating women and continuing a conflict unnecessarily when you already had a high ground, the police are already coming out there to arrest the white guys. Um, I don't think that the conflict should have continued. I don't think that the black people got should have got off that boat and jumped those white guys. I don't think that that was the right thing to do in that situation. Oh, you're a sellout. Oh, you're out here. You're out here defending the white man. You're saying that they was just drunk. But I'm like, well, in my initial take, that's that's not what I said. What I said was that I, I just don't think that it was racially motivated. I think that those guys would have fought any boat person, any boat worker that was out there moving their boat. Because that is just the nature of what happens when you have a bunch of guys with shirts off, right? Drinking in the river all day, right? That feel entitled. Yeah, I, I think they would have fought any worker dock worker that tried to move their boat right that's just my honest to god opinion i, I don't think that it was actually racially motivated i don't think the fight happened because of race i don't think they fought the guy because he was black but the pro-black woke revolutionaries made it about race called them white supremacists called them racist without any evidence right that that's the case or that this was racially motivated or that they jumped the guy because he's black they didn't jump him because he's black they jumped him over just a normal domestic dispute that happens all over the country right um in my thumbnail title okay i say the race war is here clearly that's not an allusion to my personal opinion because i don't think that it was racially motivated that's an allusion to the narrative that's being played up by again the pro-black woke revolutionaries that want to make this about race that want to come out here and cry victim and try to pretend like white people got their boot on their neck. And this is something black people deal with every day. They're getting beat up by a white man when that's statistically just not happening. Right. It's just it's just a statistical like rarity. Right. It doesn't happen. OK, this is not happening. Right. But this is the narrative that they play up. OK, 
So again, my title was an allusion to that. But see, you would understand how I title my videos, how I title my thumbnails. You understand my sarcasm. You understand my opinions. You would understand the nuance in my opinions if you actually watch my videos, right? Again, and that's what is so funny about these people who do make these response videos and try to analyze what I'm saying. It's like you can't analyze what I'm saying without actually really watching multiple of my videos over a long period of time because I have a certain style of sarcasm. I have a certain style of humor. I have a certain style in regards to how I present things. Again, a lot of the things I say is just tongue in cheek. You guys who watch me every day, you know, you understand what I'm saying is tongue in cheek when I say certain things. Like, for example, when I call people so-called people of color, right? I am basically mocking that term. It doesn't mean I'm using it like a liberal, Okay, I, I, that's not how I feel like uh, non-white people should be referred to. I am mocking it, right? That's the whole point. It's sarcasm. It's sarcasm. But again, you know, it's just it's just hilarious to me. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you don't talk about it, you're wrong. You don't want to piss off your white audience. When you do talk about it and you analyze it objectively, oh, you're selling out, right? Even though I clearly condemned these white men so many times in my initial video, but I should have known it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? If you don't agree with these people 100%, okay, you're a sellout, okay? You're a sellout. They didn't, they didn't even hear it, right? They didn't even hear it. My condemnation of these white men went in one ear and right out the other one, right? It's just hilarious, bro. I, I can't. I just can't with these people. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.